What is up guys? Finally above 30 FPS Kakas here. Thank you so much for joining me and today with cross save just launching this week so many guardians out there took the chance to switch from a console and try out the PC version of Destiny 2. So, in this video, we're going to be going over a bunch of helpful tips for those Guardians making the transition onto PC. These are things that I personally have utilized and have also talked to a lot of people who main PC and these are things that they recommended and wish they had done sooner. And let's get started. Now, first things first, this is gonna be something that will likely pay off in the long run and that is don't use your controller, stick to mouse and keyboard. Now, if you really wanna plug your controller into your PC, you can, but the added precision that comes with using mouse and keyboard is pretty substantial. And in the long run, if you wanna to commit to the PC, you may want to just stick with MNK, even if it feels a little bit weird off the bat and you're not quite as good with it, you are gonna to have to go through a learning curve, but in the end, it'll likely be worth it. Moving on from there, my next tip is that if you went to the PC, switch your key bindings as quickly as possible. There's no other word for it. The starting key bindings for Destiny 2 on PC are trash. Like, they're just terrible. So, take the opportunity to go in. Unlike a console, a lot of people just hopped on there, used the default controller layout, and were good to go. On PC, you can customize everything. Take the opportunity to move the things that you use a lot. So melee, grenade, class ability, stuff like that. Make sure those are keys that are very easy to reach. Stuff like Q and E, if you're using W, S, A, and D to move, very, very accessible, as well as with your mouse. Your mouse is likely gonna have buttons near your thumb, and those won't have anything set to them when you first start playing so make sure to set like stuff like class ability or whatever you want to those buttons and that can also be super easy it's gonna let you access uh, those abilities on the fly a suggestion cool guy actually told me and i've found quite useful is for swapping weapons initially mouse wheel will scroll through all of your weapons so if you scroll too far and you wanted your shotgun you'll end up on your heavy that has no ammo obviously problematic so what i did is up on the mouse wheel is always your kinetic down is always your energy and clicking your mouse wheel is always your heavy it's a lot more determined it makes it so that you are not going to swap to the wrong weapon accidentally moving on from there you're going to want to go into your settings and do a few things one of the first tips i have to do in those settings is turn off motion blur now this is somewhat applicable to console games as well but it's just something that you probably have forgotten about Motion blur, what it is, is essentially added blur to simulate motion. That's what the human eye does. It blurs out stuff in the background and focuses on certain objects. But the problem is that your human eye is going to do that anyways. And so you're essentially blurring things that your eyeballs and your brain are already going to blur. So it's added blur on top of blur and it can make things harder to acquire enemies in those you know blurred areas for your peripheral vision it's not as good to have a blurry uh, target there so turn off motion blur it's going to make things more clear more crisp your eye will automatically blur stuff you don't need it on i don't know why game developers keep putting this in games now i mentioned peripheral vision but why not expand that even further while you're in the settings go and change your field of view this is one of the most requested things coming from console and this is something jarring to PC players going to console. That's because consoles have a set field of view but on PC you can expand that. You can literally see wider areas. You can have enemies pop up in the corner of your screen if you increase your field of view to let's say 105 whereas the default 90 on a console you wouldn't be able to see that enemy there appearing at the very side of your screen. So you get more situational awareness, you have more information about your surroundings, increase your field of view. Moving on from there, another thing you should do while you're in those settings and my next tip, change the reticle color. The default reticle color is just white. The problem is that that gets lost 
in quite a lot of backgrounds. There's Guardians right now wearing somewhat whitish armor. There are PvP maps that have white walls. Your reticle can easily get lost in there and it can be very hard to acquire targets with a white reticle. If you change it to something like green, that's going to stand out significantly better, make it easier to acquire targets, and overall improve not only your killing potential in PvE, but PvP as well. This is something that a lot of people are going to want to do. It doesn't necessarily matter too much on what color you switch it to, but off of white is generally going to have an overall benefit of your play. Now, let's talk about some things to do if you don't have a monster PC and you're in the settings. So, if you're not running like a NVIDIA 2080 Ti and stuff like that, and you are just kind of hitting the minimum specs, maybe a bit above that, you don't have the best gear, there's some stuff that you can do in the settings that's going to improve your performance overall and not really sacrifice your gameplay. First and foremost, set an FPS cap that matches your monitor. Now, if you're, again, new to PC and you don't know about this stuff, your monitor has a refresh rate. Check it out. You can, like, click the settings button. You have uh, little buttons, a uh, menu that can pop up on your monitor. And usually when you click this, you can search around and find the refresh rate of your monitor. So if you have a 60 hertz monitor, for example, that means that you're only going to see 60 frames per second on your monitor, even if your computer can handle more, even if you're technically running like 120 frames, if your monitor is 60 hertz, you're only seeing 60 frames. So that means set your FPS to whatever your monitor is. Any extra FPS is actually just completely wasted. You will not see it. And that can, lowering the FPS cap, improve performance overall on your computer, and you're gonna notice no difference in terms of what you see on the screen. Now, related to that tip, this is kind of tip 6A, V-Sync. What V-Sync does is it tries to match the frame rate of the game to your monitor's refresh rate. But if there's no over-processing happening, so if it's not actually rendering in-game 100 frames but your monitor is 60 frames, there's nothing really for V-Sync to do and having it on can actually cause your frame rate to lower overall and can cause frame drops, etc. So, if you don't have a monster PC that's rendering frames well above your refresh rate, it's probably best to turn VSync off. Also, something I thought I would mention because I got a new monitor recently and it kind of happened to me, if you have a fancy schmancy monitor that's 165 hertz, it actually doesn't start like that. When you turn it on and plug it in, it's gonna be 60 hertz. You have to go into that menu and change it to 165. Some of you out there may have forgotten to do that, so go and do that now. Okay, now moving on from there, getting out of the settings, let's talk about some general tips. First off, you are definitely going to want to learn PC and especially mouse and keyboard in PvE before diving into PvP. PvP players are not going to take it easy on you if they see you just switched. You can't really see that, but still, they have been playing PvP for a long time. They have mastered the mouse and keyboard, and they are going to be sniping you with hand cans from across the map. You will not believe the ranges that you're going to die at. Seriously, get used to how the PC plays. You know, start popping off on Acolytes before you start popping off in the Crucible. Now, if you want to do a trial by fire scenario, you can, but for the vast majority of players, I would highly recommend getting used to the game in a PvE environment. You're still going to, especially if you're doing harder activities like raids and so on, you're still going to definitely get used to how playing on mouse and keyboard functions, get used to getting headshots, playing your life, all of that stuff. And then once you're a little bit more comfortable, you can make a much easier transition and a much less frustrating transition into PVP. Moving on from there, another tip, someone in that same vein is that when you do take on PVP, this is important to know the meta is different. So if you were playing console and you were slaying out with a certain build, that build may not be as good on PC. Inversely, things that you may have thought aren't that good on console, like the Ace of Spades, 
are phenomenal on PC. There are actual different PvP and PvE metas in these two different versions of the game. So, find out by simply asking around or by checking what other people are using or by looking online for the most used weapons in PC and so on, what the meta is, and I can tell you a little bit of what the meta is, mostly hand cannons. The increased precision with M and K means that you can land your headshots significantly more regularly. But in addition to that, the reduction in recoil means that 900 rounds per minute SMGs, stuff like the Recluse, are phenomenal on PC because you can engage enemies at medium range and consistently still land headshots, whereas on console that's nearly impossible. Another thing to mention, sniper rifles see quite a bit more play on PC than they do necessarily on consoles. Now with all that being said, it doesn't mean that your favorite pulse rifle that you love to use on console is complete garbage in PC, but there's gonna just be more things that compete with it is all. Now moving on from there, my next tip is to take advantage of the faster load times on PC. You can open your inventory, switch guns, and close your inventory faster than you can even open your inventory on console, significantly faster. So this means that you can do things like switch guns mid gunfight, just duck around cover, quickly open your inventory, pop something, switch guns, come out, kill a certain enemy, go back into cover, switch guns again. You can literally switch elements to engage different enemies. Like if you see a, a more powerful enemy with an arc shield, you can go, oh crap, duck behind cover, switch to an arc weapon, engage that enemy. Oh no, there's another guy with a void shield, duck behind cover, switch to void, go back out, engage that other enemy. That scenario is basically impossible on console. It takes so much longer to open your inventory. It takes so much longer in terms of load times that you're going to be behind cover by, for so long that enemies are likely gonna get the jump on you. They're gonna come around and start shooting you and that tactic pretty much isn't possible on console. So just be aware of that. You can do things like that on the PC and it's something that you may not think about doing if you're coming from the console. Okay, now moving on from there, my final tip for you guys is simply this. You can communicate way easier on PC than you can on console, and you can do that by just typing. Now, normally, like, if you're in a strike, if you're in the corrupted strike on the console, we've all been there, and your teammates, surprise, surprise, have no idea that throwing the relic ball at a teammate will charge it so it will do way more damage and have a bigger blast radius. Well, on console, unless you wanna invite them to your party, hope their settings are such that they can actually accept that party invite, and then they actually voluntarily join your party, and then you can tell them uh, all about that mechanic. Like, that's super unrealistic. But on the PC, you can simply click enter, hit slash, and that's going to open up a menu you can switch to, fire team chat, local chat, etc. And then you can just tell your team, hey, throw the ball at me, right? You can also use this feature to do things like slash add friend or slash invite, and then put in people's usernames to much more easily potentially add players as friends and get people in your group and so on. But yeah, the communication on PC because of these features, being able to whisper someone and being able to talk with the chat, like make use of that guys. If you're coming from console and you see someone not utilizing those corrupted balls correctly, not knowing how to activate Taken Blight Heroic, you can actually tell them what to do in the chat. So do that, take advantage of that and communicate more freely. And so guys, that's it for the video. I hope you enjoyed and found this informative. This video was definitely geared towards more beginning PC players. If you're a PC vet and have more tips, feel free to share them in the comments down below. Guys, again, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did and want to see more Destiny 2 content, be sure to slap that subscribe button. If you want to get in touch with me and keep up to date with the latest channel activity, the best way is to follow me on Twitter at Rick Kakis. That's linked in the description down below. Again, I hope you enjoyed the video and as always, have a good day.